Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Beyond Talking Points with uh, Matt and Matt. Um, so, at, at typical with this podcast, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go one or two episodes where we talk about some um, topical uh, subject matter, and then we the next episode we do some abstract, philosophical, <laughs> academic uh, matter. Um, although this isn't this topic isn't quite academic in the sense that it does inform public policy. Um, Today we'll be talking about um, a Soho Forum debate um, titled, What's the Correct Libertarian Position on Abortion? Um, the, the motion they were debating was, um, while a pregnant woman should be legally required to help the fetus survive outside of her body whenever that is possible, she should retain the legal right to evict the fetus at any time during her pregnancy. Um, then, So the two people of the debate um, were... Uh, Walter Block and Kerry Baldwin. Um, Walter Block was um, in favor of the motion. Kerry Baldwin was opposed uh, to the emo to the motion. Um, and I wanted to talk about this. Uh, well, it was like about a year ago that my, my co-host actually brought this topic up um, to me or brought this debate up in conversation and I just <laughs> promptly forgot about it. Um, and then it came into my head again recently and I was like, ah, I should watch that. And I did. And, um, it was really, uh, I found it incredibly fascinating because, um, they were talking about, or b both speakers just had, uh, or have worldviews that are so different from mine that their conceptualization on the issue of abortion was, um, they just conceptualized it in a way that's very different, um, from my position, um, even though uh, I think it can be said that my position on the issue is not far off from Walter uh, Block's, it's much farther off um, from Kerry uh, Baldwin's. Um, so basically, uh, both of them um, agree that abortion is uh, murder or, or <laughs> abortion is killing a human being, a human life. Um, but what they disagree on, I guess, is um, the legality of um, the, the abortion itself. Um, uh, Walter Block believes that um, the uh, a woman should have the legal right in the first two um, trimesters. Um, he's not saying it's okay that the fetus is it dies in the process, but he's he, he makes the claim that the woman has the property rights on her own body and that the fetus... Um, constitutes a trespasser in a sense. Um, Carrie Baldwin, um, she is a much, much more, uh, she has a much more traditional, I guess you could say conservative opinion on the matter. Um, actually, I'm not sure I can do her position justice. Um, you probably, you watched it closer. Uh, you watched it today and I watched it several days ago. Could you do her, uh, could you give a little a bit more on, on her opinion so I don't uh, put words in her mouth? Yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, so, so to specifically talk about her position, her, well, one of the interesting things about the debate is how, um, even though it's about like what the libertarian position should be on abortion, both of them are essentially pro-life in the sense that they both start from the premise that, you know, women have, the, have their own bodily autonomy and should have property rights over their own body, but then they also accept that you can't just like kill a fetus or you have to re reconcile with the fact, you have to somehow reconcile that it is counting as a life, which is why it's a starting point that like, I know a lot of libertarians don't even agree with. And, um, and that, that's why it can seem so foreign, but it's just such a nuanced debate that brings up a lot of interesting issues or elements of the debate that aren't, I think, touched on that it, anybody should really watch it, even if it's kind of hard to follow at times. So Kerry Baldwin has like this really nuanced point. So you have to, you have to have it in context of Walter Block. Walter Block essentially saying that the fetus is a trespasser. So even if the fetus ends up dying, you're evicting it, you're not killing it. A lot of abortion procedures do kill the fetus and that's bad. A lot of times they evict it, then kill it. Um, but Walter Block saying, you have, since he's essentially making the argument of libertarians aren't in favor of positive rights. And because they're not in favor of positive rights, you can't really say that she has to carry it. You can say she can evict it. It's not directly her fault that the fetus then dies, unless you're actually like scrambling its brains um, and stuff like that. So, um, so Carrie Baldwin's making the, this other point where she's kind of saying, 
you don't want to just evict it. You have to carry it to um, a moment where it's viable. So she, she's more making the, this nuanced point that although it's not exactly a trespasser, it's more of like an innocent bystander. And as a result, you shouldn't, um, you know, evict it and then let it die. You have to at least take the due diligence to carry it to a point, And then you can evict it the second it can live without you carrying it, which, which is technology, as technology improves, that date gets, you know, sooner and sooner because premature babies of like that are much younger are, are living more often now. And that, that's improving year over year. Um, and I think, uh, well, she, she makes another few nuanced points, I guess, in her thinking, but in the conclusion, that uh, that's where she ends up and that's where she departs from Walter Block. Um, so yeah, she, she, she also takes that conclusion in different ways, like based on, you know, what, once they talk about examples like rape, where she, um, she brings up restitution in, inter in, 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 in interesting ways, but I don't think that's something you need to, I guess, grasp. It, it's more of just, you can't just evict you have to at least carry it to viability, then you can evict. So I, I, I want you to jump in and I want to hear some of your thoughts about them. Um, I, I guess, so you're coming in completely from the outside, but you end up texting me about it a little bit and, you, and how you just opened up the show. And you're kind of saying you do kind of fall in line with Walter Block. So I do want to hear more of how you get to his thinking, because I know you don't accept all of his premises by any means. <laughs> so I kind of want to see how you get there. Yeah, um, so I guess I would almost say I have um, Walter Block's position um, with certain caveats, um, or at the very least, um, I, my use of language, or, or the, the terms I use are very different um, from the terms that Walter Block is using. But like in, in terms of, uh, I guess, legality, um, we're basically, or we're very close, our positions are very close. Um, so, and, and I know, I think like one of the first episodes of this podcast we did, we did a brief conversation on the issue. Um, and actually that conversation like stuck in my mind and it annoyed me because I remember what I said specifically. I said something about like, you could categorize me in either position with caveats. Um, and so I forever curse myself for saying that, uh, <laughs> um, it seems kind of like a dodge of a question at, at, in a way. Um, but anyway, so that's beside the point. Um, so I come from a family. I, I um, my, my background, I guess, is, um, from a family, um, that is, I guess you could say moderately um, pro-choice. Um, some probably there's some disagreement here and there among my family members, but uh, it's good. Um, that's kind of my that, that's kind of where I first heard this issue, and I heard that's how it, that's the perspective I first heard um, it talked about. Um, I, I have since come to be a bit more. Uh, my opinion on the issue, I guess, has become more nuanced. Um, as, uh, and I think it's much more black and white um, than um, sometimes than how it's sometimes portrayed. Um, in the sense that, like I, I think, uh, it, I think you can say that it is a life um, that the fetus is a human life at some level, um, but I that that doesn't that doesn't. Uh, get me to the place where I, I, I say, okay, we, we can't have abortion. You have to carry it to term or you not term. You have to carry it to its point of viability or you have to carry it to term. You have to carry it until you, uh, until you, you, you know, it starts until you're able to give birth. Um, and I guess I don't get there in the sense that, um, and this is a very this can this could easily be misconstrued. This is a slightly radical claim, but I'm going to say it anyway because this is my thought process on the matter. Um, I'm not sure that life is always sacred or always worth preserving. Um, so, given that, and given a lot of Walter Brock's points about um, not as I mean, I don't know how, how I would. Uh, if I'd exactly talk about bodily autonomy, um, well, I guess I, I guess I kind of would in a sense, because um, 
I think there is a, there is a difference between like a two month old fetus and a 32 year old woman. I mean, there's no, 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 you know, not even pro-lifers would disagree with that. Um, and so the question, I guess, then is like, well, um, you, you got to balance, you got to think about this, uh, you got to think about which um, being or which person um, has, I guess, more um, authority in the matter, or, or not authority, but which person has the, the say in the matter. Um, I mean, at some level, you could almost say that, that like, and I'm just thinking out loud here, but like it is a life. Um, I, I guess it maybe depends on like how we're defining person though at some level um, because uh, fetuses, um, as far as we know at least, are not really conscious in the way that you and I are conscious. Um, and I don't think they experience, they don't, obviously don't experience the world or exper their, uh, their being or their experience is extremely limited in that sense. Um, it, what I'm trying to get at, I guess, is my, my position to lay it out as clearly as possible is um, I think that, uh, uh, that an abortion should be legal, um, but the longer the, uh, the, longer, uh, the pregnancy goes on, there need to be more and more restrictions um, I don't know if I'd go so far as to say it should ever necessarily be illegal, um, but I, I do think I, um, I do think that late-term abortion should be. Um, I mean, and they are pretty much like most abortions have are not late-term. Uh, by the way, like I'd have to pull up the stat I found on the CDC, but most term most abortions are not late-term late-term abortions. Um, but obviously, I'm not incredibly comfortable with late-term abortions. Um, in certain scenarios, I think they're, they're justified. Um, but when it comes to the point or w when the fetus has gotten to a point where it's viable outside the womb, then I'm, I'm willing to say that there's more case to be made to um, save the fetus. Um, unless it's like, I don't know if the mother, she might, if she dies giving birth, then I'm willing to say, okay, we can, we can do the procedure. Um, and then I guess another thing to say, and then I'll let you jump in here. I'm kind of just throwing a lot at you. Um, I can understand Walter Block's point in the sense uh, about, um, uh, you know, not, not using abortion or not doing abortion when technology reaches a point where you don't need it, um, a point where like you can take any fetus at any stage of development out of the woman's body and it can still, you can, uh, it will survive via whatever technology you have. At that point, then you can make a case that uh, a strong case that yeah, you shouldn't have abortion at that point. Um, but we don't have that technology yet, um, and I'm not comfortable with like with the position of the woman has to carry it to viability. Um, I'll let you jump in here. I'm not sure that quite answered your question, but I was trying to be as thorough as possible. Oh, that, that was a good rundown of your position. And then, like, I guess how it relates a little bit with some of the people who talked in the debate. So, so one of the things that I think is, I, I, I think the, the whole conversation about abortion in the United States, including this conversation that we watched, uh, the, 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 the form debate, um, it just is an interesting way of just looking at the way people come to conclusions and the, the, the reasoning and the logic there. Because a lot of things you hear are essentially fragments of points and then an assertion, right? So you, you, you were getting at something um, that like some somebody like Dave Rubin would say, which I, I bring him up because I know you hate him. So it's funnier. Um, that, that's the inside joke for anybody who doesn't get it. Um, but, but Dave Rubin would just kind of make the nuanced point of like, yeah, I'm uncomfortable with forcing a woman to, to, to hold on to it. But I also recognize at some point that that fetus is a little person that hasn't been born yet. It's just an early stage of human development that's just still inside the womb. Um, and by, by, by recognizing that he's like in this uncomfortable situation. Well, well, well but Ben Shapiro comes to that the conclusion about that. And then he says, so you can't kill it and not carrying the baby ends up leading to its death. Therefore you're killing it. And then you also have the, the, the kind of reasoning from like the Ben Shapiro types, like the, the, the traditional pro-life side um, where, well, well uh, there, there's a couple other parts of it. I, I kind of want to dig into a little bit, 
But um, the, the, the other thing is you kind of mentioned how a fetus isn't conscious. But a lot of those arguments about like the consciousness of a fetus kind of bug me because I feel like you can say the same thing about like a four month old and it's not dishonest. So I feel like it's, it's easy to wander into a pro life position by justifying it. Cause it's like not conscious in the way that adults aren't, but then thinking like, well, but then maybe you can apply that same argument to like the mentally handicapped and toddlers. And that, that that's like, it's not that that's um, something that other people are intending to do. But I don't think it's intellectually dishonest to point out you can make a similar argument that would apply to them too. And that that's like really scary territory because then it's like, well, that feels really wrong that you could like maybe kill a six month old if it was a burdensome. It's not like that nobody's attached to it except for like the mother. So if the mother doesn't want it, then it's like, well, then what's the difference between that and a, a, a fetus to some extent, an unwanted fetus? Um, Cause they're both just early stages of human development to some extent. So somebody like, effective altruists and Ben Shapiro kind of agree on that because um, you have people like um, who, who's the very famous effective altruist Peter Singer yeah yeah he's the one who's made essentially pro infanticide arguments for by, by using like I guess that same reasoning um, it's just like the other side of the coin so a lot a lot of the debate is just kind of all or nothing in like a way that's almost interesting and that's why Walter Block and um, Carrie Baldwin actually kind of try to unify their thing, their, their arguments into almost like a conceptualization that encompasses everything and is almost timeless. So I understand the, the criticism of Walter Block saying that's just not relevant to policy right now, but it's almost like Walter Block wasn't even up there arguing for policy, right? He was just saying, well, here's the reason why abortion in its current state is immoral. And at least if we look forward towards technological trends a hundred years out, we could probably uh, put, put my worldview into place and it wouldn't be that unrealistic and it's like well that's kind of cool so, so, so that's what I appreciate from it but I feel like he unifies things in a way that is much more satisfying than like I have one point and I believe that one point is an override, overriding point and instead Walter Block integrates it and then he brings up things like okay well let's talk about contracts let's talk about like what we knew when and what the implications are and then how do we use that into um moral obligation how do we consider that in terms of like directly harming things and it's very nuanced and very careful and i think it's like what you'd want out of like moral philosophy to some extent so i, I really respect his view for that um now i think carrie baldwin's the pragmatist so i think carrie baldwin's essentially saying yeah but if you accept the pro-life position and you know um that our technology isn't there, and you do know that eviction does lead to a dying, can we take it a step further? And I think that relates to the example, that wasn't used in this debate, but it's the example of a stowaway on a plane. Um, although the, the stowaway on the plane, um, you know, he stowed away on your plane, right? So he knew he was trespassing and presumably a fetus wouldn't. But if a stowaway is on your plane and, and you find out he's on your plane, you know, while you're up two miles above the ground, you don't want to, if you evict him, he's certainly going to fall to his death, right? So that, that's the kind of consideration that I guess Carrie is um, taking into account. And then she's also kind of adding a fetus isn't really like a stowaway. It didn't intend on being there. So um, it just was an innocent bystander. So that's, that, that's like the complicating twists that are actually like, I, I find compelling to think about. And it is hard to, I guess, pick one of them over the other for this reason. Like, I think Walter Block's more consistent, and I think he makes more sense. But it's also, I think, I, I think Carrie's position almost portrays the principle it's built up because it really doesn't want to kill, kill a fetus, I guess, indirectly, indirectly lead to a fetus's death. So, yeah. So, th that's some of my thoughts and some reaction to, I guess, your thoughts a little bit. I, not, not that I was overtly trying to criticize your position, but it was, um, that that's almost like, my broad reaction to a lot of typical opinions and i don't feel like your opinion was unique at, like in in the sense that it's, it's not that you're a boring person matt <laughs> i didn't mean it that way but i mean like a lot of people have that kind of nuanced view like the, the further pregnancy gets the more i'm sketched out by it there should probably be some laws but uh, it's all kind of sketchy i'm glad nine eight, eight months uh, developed fetus aren't getting massacred like i'm you're glad about that and like that that's a pretty normal take I'll, I'm, I'm gonna say it even though like there is obviously nuance there um so yeah so, so some thoughts from you uh, well i i think this is why um or 
the issue of abortion, I think, is a good example of how moral philosophy um, is not uh, a cakewalk. It, you can't always, and, and I know it, it, it's kind of, and I'm not saying you're doing this, but it, it can be easy to say, well, Matt, you know, or you have the, or I have the um, your typical uh, middle of the road position. Um, why don't you pick a side? <laughs> That's why I didn't like the way I said I, I had expressed my belief in the very first episode we did on abortion, because um, that was much more uh, wishy-washy in a sense. Um, but I, I just don't think um, I, I don't think there's a clear-cut answer here. Um, I, I think there are, um, in some sense, it's conflicting values, and you just kind of have to decide, I guess, what. Um, I, you could almost think of it as a spectrum, I guess. And like on the one end of the spectrum, it's a complete, like the fetus is the most important thing. And then on the other end of the spectrum is like the woman's life or the woman's body is the most important thing. And just where do you fall on that um, spectrum? Um, I, I had something that I kind of want to bring up that's kind of, I guess, funny to look back on and, and talk about how it relates to this. So a few episodes ago, it wasn't a few. God, it definitely was not a few. Um, for, 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 for those of you who um, are aware of our podcast feed, I recently uploaded like 12 of our episodes to the podcast feed. I was way behind. So because I did that, I only listen to things on podcasts. I don't like watching things on YouTube. So I, I ended up listening to like a few random past episodes just to reflect on them. And one was, I think it was already up on the feed anyways, but it was our discussion on negative and positive rights. I think that was from like September um, so probably like 14 episodes ago or so. And I think at the end of that episode, I asked you this one. Um, it was, it was, it's like a thinking experiment that I've heard a lot. And I, I think it's a fun scenario. And then the, 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 there, there are like two different moral questions at the end. And um, it's important to separate them. And the, the whole question is like, you're going to a job interview. It's very important. You're in an expensive suit and you're almost, you're barely going to run on time. If you're late, you know, you won't get the job. And you definitely need this job or else you're going to be screwed. You won't have money for rent next month, yada, yada, yada. So you're walking there and you're, you're going to get there just in time. And then you look over to your right and there's a kid drowning in the lake and there's nobody attending him. And you're like the only one who's witnessing this. So then there's like two questions. There's like the, are you obligated to save the kid? And should you save the kid? So there's like the normative question. And there's also like the question of like actual obligation which I think goes beyond the normative, right? It's like the, um, the actual like principle of it. And I think that that plays into this debate a lot because the, this whole debate is essentially people talking about woman autonomy versus a right to life. It, that's, why, that's why the conversation is so much easier for, um, for, for left-wing people who are willing to disregard the concept that like a fetus is alive. And I'm not, I'm not trying to actually like dismiss the point of like why they might think it's not a life. I'm just saying, if you dismiss that point, it's such an easier issue. Um, and that's why it's really dishonest when the left implies that the right wing doesn't actually believe it's a life and they just want to control women. It's like, no, this is actually like a really tough question for anybody who's like small government oriented because of because it's these two very conflicting things. Um, but 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 then it comes down to like the OK, you can admit abortion is bad, but also still think it's legal, which is kind of like your position to some extent. Um, or, 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 or you could accept that there's like some sort of like moral concern that is lingering or like a, a cost of like human value to some extent. Um, so th 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 there are nuances to be had there. And then it really is, is down to sussing out, okay, what, 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 what ideally would happen in this situation, but also like what is the like moral obligation? And then you can take that the third level of, okay, but given our current world right now, how can people play it out? And that, that's the part that isn't even touched by this debate. Um, so those, those are like the heavy, I guess, questions. Um, and then like when, when I give that example of the kid drowning in the lake, I always, I, I, I kind of say like, I'd probably keep on walking. And I'd probably, I'd probably try to alert somebody to it. But like, if my life's about to get screwed up, I, I don't I don't know if in the moment I'd be able to will myself up to make this huge sacrifice when I'd be like, is that kid drowning though? Uh, uh, this is important. And then like usually on 
if you're indecisive on average, you kind of settle on whatever you are already doing. So like, I like to think in my head as much of a good person. I actually think I am at times. It's like, I think I'd keep on walking though, because it's a tough decision. So you usually keep on walking. I'm not going to assume I'd have the moral courage to throw my life away to like rescue like some eight year old who managed to, you know, drown himself like an idiot. <laughs> so, but, but it's like, but ideally I would, because you don't want random eight year olds to die if somebody could have stopped it. So, and that eight-year-old's life is probably more valuable than whatever my huge financial concerns would have been. I could probably sort out in like two months, but I probably have to like get a credit card and pay for everything for a month and then really scramble for a job. So it's like, you know, the obligation question is important as much as the normative one is. It's easier to settle on the normative and just say, so you shouldn't get abortions, but we'll, we'll allow them. It's almost like it dodges, but it could buy by addressing the norm, normative and the practical. It's almost a dodge of like, are we truly grasping the significant clash of rights here? And even if you, um, I think you can still come to that conclusion on clashing of rights. And then like the average statist can still go, okay, but that's fine. We, we still want it to be legal to a certain extent anyways. I think that's fine to some extent. I'm not going to argue that right now. It's more of just like, I feel like that underpinning isn't even a conversation that happens. And I find that like the most interesting part. Um, so yeah, that, that, that was a, that was a rambling ramp. I think I got my idea out there. Um, so I don't know your, your thoughts. Um, I, I mean, I, I think it, uh, I mean, this kind of goes back, I guess, to maybe a distinction between, uh, well, a distinction between politics and morality, let's say, or politics and ethics in the sense that like, what, sh I mean, what do we deem as moral versus what do we deem as legal? Um, and of course, there are um, there, there are obvious examples where uh, something that is moral or we deem immoral, we say is illegal. So we um, don't condone, um, uh, you know, uh, punching someone in the head <laughs> willy nilly. We would say that's immoral, and we also say that's illegal. Um, but there might there might be cases where someone would say something's immoral. But it's not necessarily illegal. Um, well, some some people, if you're like a super, like a, a fundamentalist Christian, you might say uh, it's immoral to drink alcohol. But well, we no longer have no alcohol is no longer illegal. It, it once was. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm willing to say that uh, in a perfect world, abortion would never be necessary. Um, that that like that, that's fine. I don't have any issue with that. Um, I think that's a perfectly legitimate um, statement, um, but because I mean, we don't live. I mean, in case you guys, in case anyone listening to this podcast didn't know, um, we don't live in a perfect world. <laughs> um, and if you thought we did, then good. I don't know. <laughs> Congratulations, I guess. Um, but we don't live in a perfect world, and. Um, so I, I think it goes back to what I was saying earlier um, about um, it, it, it's not always about like right versus wrong in human action. Um, it, you know, it, it would be nice if, if everything was just that simple. It's like, okay, you never do anything wrong and you only, only do things that are right. Um, but I mean, that, that's just not how, <laughs> it's not, not really possible to not ever do wrong or evil it's like um, uh, a lot of people I would talk to um, would make the argument um, that there's no ethical consumption under capitalism, let's say. Um, and I just, I just bring that up to say that um, there's no question, whether you think it's state capitalism or you know, real free market capitalism or however you want to define this, there's no question that um, uh, you know, the, th this iPhone right here there were probably some shady business practices that went into making this iPhone. Um, it's like, but I have an iPhone. I, I, like, I, I like having an iPhone. I want having an, I, I want an iPhone because it makes my life easier. Um, or the example I've given in the past is um, uh, I pay taxes. I don't, I don't uh, not pay my taxes, but my, I mean, and I, my taxes might go to uh, the war machine. They might go to, bombing Middle Eastern countries. Um, that's immoral. Um, but I don't think that, 
I'm not really willing to not pay my taxes for that reason. Um, so I, I think it's like, this is almost, I guess, this is almost really where philosophy breaks down or where like a philosophical system breaks down. Um, you, you can't really fit the world into a, a neat philosophical system and you can't, you can't answer all the questions you would ever want to answer, or you can't even, not even in terms of like morality and ethics. Um, so I, I just think that um, uh, the uh, abortion, the, the procedure, um, an abortion procedure is, uh, and this is another example, <laughs> this is me again, uh, saying a very common position, but I think it's true. So that's why I'm saying it. It's a necessary evil. Um, it, it's just something because I don't, uh, and I don't know if you want to get into that rabbit hole or not, but, but I don't see the, uh, I don't see the, uh, the point of like completely making abortion illegal uh, or, or, or just not ever allowing it in a society or whatever. I don't see that in, in, in our current, um, like given our current technology and just the way society is structured at the moment, I don't see that as being any morally superior in any way. In fact, I think it would be far, far worse, uh, far, be a far, far worse society to live in. Um, so th that, that's really, um, at some, that's, that's, that's at the basic, at the most basic level, that's, that's kind of where, where I fall on the matter. Um, I'll let you respond. And then I also wanted to tie back into, you mentioned consciousness earlier. I wanted to talk a little bit about that, but I'll let you respond to my, uh, other points first. Okay. Well, so, so, so you're kind of hinting at like, so, so this whole debate brings up like two strong, I guess, questions that I have to reckon with as a person who's an ANCAP and somebody who would like, I guess, like if I was going to loosely label myself, it'd be pro-life. And so the, 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 the two really tough questions, the one that's most relating to what you're saying is um, how the law interacts with that. So no, normally I like to think that things can be solved in private courts to some extent. So usually if somebody, um, I, I mean, imagine if I did something really bad on my job, well, did we have a contract and we go to some arbitrator and we actually wouldn't involve any type of public court because that's who just sell contracts. So in general, I'm fa in favor of a legal system that would move more towards that. Now, when you talk about things like abortion though, the, the unique the, the, the unique part about abortion <laughs> is that one of the, 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 the party that, you know, um, is evicted or, you know, it gets killed in our current procedures it it's not a thing that could go and find a legal representation it it dies as a result of this and it dies generally because the mom doesn't want it so the people who are most close to do work on its behalf are people it's it's only relationships and connections to our human world i guess to some extent our our, our more public world where we interact and make contracts our social world i guess is the best word the only ties that it has are to the people that decide to do the act right so that you can't it's it's very hard to come up with some sort of system where you can give defense to the the fetus because the only you know, connection to the outside world beyond the mom is the mom and the mom decided didn't want the baby for whatever reason. It could be a good reason. I'm just saying that, that that's the situation. So you can't, it's hard to say, well, you can resolve it in a court of law. And that for the same reason, it's hard to say that you should be able to resolve that in terms of um, a private arbitration group. So, and for, and for that reason, I just don't really think the law should be involved with abortion. I mean, I don't think the state should subsidize it either, which they do. Um, so I think the state should be on the outside. And I think it really just means you have to make the arguments on the ground. Uh, you have to make the arguments about it and you have to do what you can to make sure people don't end up in the situation. And I would say like, I, I'm very pro things like birth control and stuff like that. So it's like, if you're an advocate of all those things and you're an advocate of um, in general, people's well-being being better which I'm generally an advocate of, I think that's what free market capitalism does is make the well-being of people better, then you end up with less of the situations where people want abortions. Um, and I think that's the only real way to fight it. So I, I think that's kind of how it ties into the whole legal debate. Um, I, Cause I just don't see there being, um, re, there isn't really recourse to figure it out. Now, with that said, I, I don't think that has anything to do with the philosophical ground. That, that's like the pragmatic way of, um, uh, of dealing with it. Um, in, in regards to the philosophy, and that, that's just given the fact that the fetus isn't 
a social creature. Can, so can I, I ask can't... you a question then? Yeah. Um, I don't mean to interrupt, but um, so so I, I completely agree with you about um, con like uh, contraception, education, family planning, all all that good stuff. Like if you if you uh, edu you know educate people about sex, about safe sex, using protection, the birth control pill, um, condoms, all this stuff. <laughs> Um, and, and, and you can, uh, like the, the studies are in, you, uh, abortion goes down, <laughs> um, the more education and, 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 uh, community engagement and, and, uh, uh, so, so there's plenty of things you can do, which, um, decrease the number of abortions out there, um, which I would, uh, obviously I'm in favor of, um, and you are as well, but, um, I guess, how do you fall then about, so you, I guess you, you kind of characterize, characterize yourself as pro-life in a way. So then like from a pragmatic perspective, then as an ANCAP, who's also pro-life, how do you, I, I didn't quite understand how you square that circle. Um, I, I would like you to flesh that out a bit more for me. So I more understand your thought process. Cause I, I, I understand I guess what I'm trying to get at is I, I don't see those things, even though they decrease abortion, I don't see things like family planning and sex education. They, even though they decrease abortion, I don't see them completely getting rid of abortion. Um, I don't see abortion going away anytime soon, really. So the question is like, what do you do then in, uh, what do you do with the procedure? Do you allow the procedure? Do you not allow the procedure? Do you just have a, a firm cutoff date? You can't have an abortion after this so many this many months. What, what, well, okay. So, what, what is your pragmatic then? Your pragmatic prescription uh, on um, that on that subject? So, I mean, I I I, I guess. It I actually think that question is a quantitative question that I can't answer, which is a fun way of putting it. So, 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 so really, the question is. Um, Matt, you're pro-life, but you hate using government institutions. So how do you deal with that? Um, and I don't trust the government to fairly adjudicate any restrictions because I don't trust the government to fairly adjudicate anything, right? That's why I don't trust our legal system at all. So like on a big picture, um, I'm not for the laws in the sense I'm not for any government laws because I think other people should be enforcing laws, right? So I, I think other parties should be stepping in all the time. Now, if we live in a world where there are people who are incrementalists and there are incrementalists that are willing to work in the system, if I had to put myself in the shoes of an incrementalist with my values, I would probably be in favor of things that are seen as traditionally pro-life because there might be a quantitative argument for it, reducing abortion if you reduce access or you don't license these things that like if you don't license uh, certain buildings to exist, but I'm not an incrementalist, right? So I don't, I, I, I don't evaluate the quantitative questions of, I guess, w which one would be um, better or worse in our real world right now, because right now I have no power. So it doesn't really matter what I think on that issue. So I haven't thought about that quantitative question a lot. Um, it, it probably, you'd probably have to look at a lot of statistics, right? Um, I, I would think the best way to reduce abortions is what I'll, some private conservative groups do. And they like, moms with like that are really poor and are single moms usually will reach out to them and they'll pretty much be like I have no money and I might get an abortion I don't know and then they'll provide them with a lot of information on how to get back on their feet and things they could give to them if they don't want to get abortions there's like selected targeting things like that so there are plenty of private ways to combat abortion without using the law and that's like the only thing that I've really paid any attention to um, I, I don't know what the legal answer is. I, I don't think any of the legal answers are moral just because I don't think the state can adjudicate them morally, but that doesn't make abortion remotely moral at all, you know? So yeah, I, I agree that's a tricky question. I just think it ends up being like a weirdly data-based answer if I was, if I was gonna be a pragmatist, right? Because it'd be whatever answer minimizes abortion, right? Like, like, like wouldn't, that, wouldn't that require then state intervention? No, 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 no. I, so, so if there was no state at all, right? Well, well, if I say there's no state at all, then it's not a pragmatist view because we have a state. You know what I mean? You're asking me my pragmatist view. So you're kind of asking for what should the state's role be? And it kind of seeds that there should be a state. I guess what I meant by pragma pragmatic view then is the current the current situation we live in, which has a, a federal, in which a, in which a federal government, like how, what would you, like how, like I, I do you support or, or, or like 
how, how would I put it? I mean, we, we currently have, as you know, a federal government, um, which you hate. That's all right. I understand. I hate it in many ways as well. Um, but like, g- given the current circumstances, I, I completely agree with you again about the, the stuff that reduces abortion. But in terms of the legality of the issue currently, like, where would you fall? Or do you just not accept the premise of the question? Well, the, well, I am accepting the premise. And I, 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 I guess I'm saying if I'm being practical about it and saying there, there, there is a role for the state, if that was the premise of the question, then I would say, uh, w- whatever solution gets us to minimize abortions. I just don't know what gets us to minimize abortions. Now, when it comes to like the political perception of it, it's easy for me to mentally side with the right wing because the left wing pretty much says everybody has the right to an abortion. But I agree with Walter Block and Kerry Baldwin that abortion, not eviction, I, abortion is murder. Um, and me, me, Kerry and Walter Block agree on that. But I, I would agree that eviction isn't the same as murder. So it's like I, I see people champion genocide. So it's hard to ever side with them. It's just hard to uh, stomach it in terms of like my heuristic reaction. Um, so that makes me want to side with the right wing, if that makes sense. But I think in the end, it's whatever side ends up on uh, numerically reducing abortions is the best. Um, I just don't know what side actually- it is. Abortions are actually at an all-time low currently. Um, well, as, as, some a, study, as a, as a some, rate, though, right? Some study came out recently. Um, abortions have been going down yeah. um, in the last few years. Mm-hmm. Um, so actually, I would make the argument. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the statistic to back me up off, off the top of my head, so I, I don't expect you to, to just blindly agree with me. But I would actually make the argument that what decreases abortion is uh, not... Um, that is the the legality of the procedure itself um, oh i would dis- well I, I you know what i would chalk up m- 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 i would chalk up most of the reduction in abortions to people getting it, it was like a change in cultural ethos around teen sex and the, there's actually a lot about this when, when it comes to um a lot of the scandals like do you remember when christina hoff summers was like a huge culture war figure like four years ago so around that span of time a lot of books came out that were kind of all about how college students young college students would admittedly talk about sex as if it was something that is like potentially very dangerous so there was kind of um a change in the com- conventional wisdom that like sex is a lot more dangerous than people thought of it 30 years ago and i think that leads to a lot less uh, younger people participating in it. And I think a lot of people will attribute some of these things to education or increased expansion of, I guess, abortion access. But it seems like there's been a cultural shift of saying abortion's okay, but also people are like deeply afraid of sex in a way that is um, not understood. Because because now you can hear about young people going on Tinder and Tinder's allegedly like a hookup app and all this stuff. And it's like, oh yeah, these people are have all this easy access to sex. And it's actually like, there, there's some wild stuff that's happening in terms of like people our age and um, meet, meeting other people in terms of like Pareto distributions where some people get all the interaction and some people get none. And in, in the end, I think that's led to a lot less sex between young and responsible people. And even people who are young and having sex while they're just dating as opposed to getting married, they're still doing it like not drunk because now people are afraid to have sex drunk because they think they might get accused of rape and so so forth and so forth. So like, I think people are putting themselves unintentionally or, or I, I mean, I don't know if it's like the end goal was this, but people have put themselves in a mindset that's le- made them less susceptible to a lot of um, unwanted pregnancies. So I think it's just more of like a weird trends have impacted that in a way. Uh, that's why, like, I think on the cultural front, the anti-abortion people are losing. But because I don't think they've won the moral argument, I think pop culture has won the moral argument by being the conventional wisdom. And it's the default setting as being okay with abortion. Um, but that, I don't think that's reflected in the numbers because of other trends, right? That, that, that's the argument I'd make. So um, I wanted to go back... Uh... This is changing the subject a bit. I wanted to go back to the question of um, consciousness. Um, now, that's not an easy, that, that, like, is a fetus conscious? Now, that's not an easy question to, uh, to answer because uh, we don't even understand consciousness at some level. I mean, we can, like, you can kind of, I guess, people think they understand it at, on the level of, like, basic human interactions like i assume you're conscious you assume i'm conscious you know i assume my mom's conscious you assume your mom's conscious etc cetera, etc cetera. um but I, I do have an issue uh, or i disagree um i do not think um an abortion at two months 
is the same thing as killing a six-year-old or killing a three-year-old. Um, I, I, I think it, you can make a good argument. I mean, we don't even have to use the term consciousness if you don't want to, but I think you can make a really good argument that um, in terms of like um, – that a that a six month old or or a three year old is far more aware and alive and it, it's being it, it exists at a level that a two month old fetus does not, um, so, and, and but and and that's me saying like yeah it's still a two month old fetus is still a life, but it's not a life in the same way that a six month old or a three year old or a thirty two year old are a life. Um, so th that is, that, that would be how I square that circle. Um, I, you know, we can say it's a life all day and that's fine. And I would agree with you. Um, but I'm not sure that's, I, I don't think that's um, really what's at issue um, when the fetus is not um, viable outside the womb. Um, so, I guess like to and to, to expand on that a little bit. Um, imagine, um, so, so one thing that Walter Block, like uh, uh, something he uh, brings up, I guess, is like some, some story. I don't know how accurate it is or, or how, I don't know the details of the story, but according to Walter Block, anyway, there was some guy whose wife was, um, is it brain dead or comatose or something? She was going to be pretty much, as, as far as the doctors could tell, unconscious indefinitely. She was just in a hospital bed. Ex you know, uh, her body was basically there, but her mind wasn't. Um, and so, and, and then there was some issue. Like he wanted to get, according to Walter Block, the guy wanted to get married, but he couldn't because he was still married to this woman. So he went to a judge. You know, wanted to get the woman's, wanted to pull the plug and 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 the woman's uh, uh, woman's and the woman's life um and the, the judge decided in his favor and walter block was like no 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 that's immoral uh what about some what about what if the family like wanted to keep her uh, uh, you know uh keep her hooked up to those uh machines or whatever that keep her physically alive um what if there's technology 50 years from now where or uh, she could have been revived um but I, I bring that up to, to say that um, if a person is brain dead, <laughs> um, I think their level of, like, I am not opposed to um, pulling the plug because it's not, uh, and I'm not saying, again, this is another tricky issue. I'm not trying to make be black and white here, but, but um, it, it's not so much the body that that makes you you i mean it it is it's at, at some level but really what you are is is your brain and 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 your mind that's what you are but if you're brain dead you're at, at some level you don't even exist anymore <laughs> so it, it, it's it's like uh, at some level you could make a comparison between a brain dead adult um laying in a hospital bed um, and like a uh, two month old fetus because they don't have like this mental life that even uh, uh, newborns do or uh, so um, or, or a six month old or, or a three year old or a 32 year old. Um, so I think it really depends on, I think our, my definition of per personhood at some level um, really depends a lot on the uh the mind the consciousness of the individual um now i guess one more quick point just to, just to uh, just, I, one more quick point okay. I, just just to i, I want to make clear about something um i don't i someone could hear me say that and then say well matthew are you saying then that if someone is uh you know mentally impaired um that, that they're not a person it's like no because even if you have some mental disability, you're still conscious. I mean, you're just, you're, you still, you still respond to, you can respond to stimuli, you can interact with people, you have a personality. Um, but like, but, but like a, a two month old fetus, does that have a personality or, or, or some, a, a person who's brain dead, do they have a personality? It's like, 
no, not really. Um, so th th that is um, an important uh, distinction uh, to make. Um, I, I do not agree in the slightest that it is that a sick killing a six month old or a okay. toddler you, uh, is equivalent to ending um, uh, pregnancy at two months. So I, I'm going to jump in with because I was kind of with you until you wrapped up part of it. Um, but I kind of do want to wrap up to, to get to the thing that I, I mentioned earlier. Um, I was talking about earlier. Um, but, but, but to respond to that, Okay, so I have actually heard that a lot, the whole thing about plugging, like the pu pu pulling the cord on a brain dead person versus like a, a two month old fetus, like neither of them are conscious. Now, the the, 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 re the real reason why I kind of object to it, and I think Walter Block obje would object to that too, is because the two month old, unless it's a unique scenario, their trajectory is towards consciousness, unlike the person who is brain dead, right? The brain dead person needs like a miracle that hasn't really happened for anybody to come back. Um, now, a, a, a one-year-old, un unless it's been diagnosed with something, is on average going to become a, a much more conscious being several years down the road. And I think the same applies to like a four-month-old fetus. So that's how I end up squaring the circle of like, well, yeah, I don't have any memories from when I was in the womb. Although I also don't really have many memories like pre being like five. Um, <laughs> so, but, 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 but aside from that whole point, and that, that's why I think I get kind of scared when certain people make the arguments. But aside from that whole point, it's just like, it doesn't matter because my trajectory was towards you know advancing so if somebody was brain dead and there was really no hope you, you can hope still and well and i think walter box said if the parents want to pay for it you can hope for technological innovation or miracle gear you can hope for that and there, there's nothing too wrong with that um but i would say even in the two-month-old fetus stance you don't need the miracle because on average or or it's not even about it being on average it's just the normal trajectory is it's going to become more developed and it's going to be more conscious. It's not going to stay a two-month-old fetus forever. It's going to grow and it's going to expand on its being, its its, its things. So that, that and that is, I guess, the argument for the fertilized egg being the start of life, as opposed to just a sperm, right? Because the sperm isn't on that trajectory. It has to actually, like, you know, go and um, get involved with an egg, and then they have to become a fertilized egg. Then once you have the fertilized egg, though, it's on that trajectory. Um, so I think that's, I think that's the real distinction there. I think you probably want to, I assume you want to get word in, um, or are you okay with that being where we leave off? You're, you're, you're iffy on it. Uh, okay. Okay. How, how about you hold yourself to like one minute? Uh, sure. I, I can do that. Um, so, so I, I, I guess, um, to, to wrap up then, um, it, uh, I like I, I uh, it's true. Everyone who existed was a fetus. That's true. Um, but I think the issue is not um, the projection. The issue is um, the moment. What are you dealing with in the moment? So again, I'm really going back to I, I think I am fairly pragmatic in, in this matter. Um, I'm looking at it from the perspective of in the moment, if there's a pregnant woman right now, she's uh, I don't know why I keep using two months. I could say three months or four months, really. Um, uh, Pre-viability, like my issue is not, oh, they're going to be, if you if the pr woman continues to be pregnant um, and it gives birth to her, it'll probably become a conscious human being. My issue is in the moment, can we say that a fetus is equivalent to a newborn or equivalent to any of these other people that we would say we, we can't, uh, whose lives we can't end. And, and I just don't think it is. Got it. Um, I, and, I think, I think, I think that's a good place to leave off. And, and I, I think that's just a fundamental disagreement. So I wouldn't even need to bounce off it. I would just say, yeah, I don't think it needs to be equivalent. And I guess I care about the trajectory and I think you are being like in the moment. And I think that's fair. Um, and the viewers, the listeners can decide what side they stand more on and better yet, they can listen to Walter Block and Carrie Baldwin argue it out. Cause it's wonderful, even though it's a, it's a little, it's a little over a year old. I would still recommend they find it on YouTube or any podcatcher. Um, and it, it's, it's from the Soho forum and listen to it. Cause it is just like really good academic thought in a way that's actually like entertaining. And as much as I'm a big fan of not civil discourse, they're very civil about it. Um, and 
So, uh, so, so, so with that said, I know we're wrapping up much earlier than our recent episodes. We, it's good. I think it's good that we kind of condensed ourselves to 45 minutes for once. Um, but I do have something that's kind of pushing on the other end that I was trying to get to. So I apologize for cutting you off because this was a good topic and I'm glad we did get to it. Um, you can find all of our episodes on any podcatcher because it's the podcatcher is updated now. So you can find all like 42 episodes leading up to this one, which I think is 43. You can also find our episodes on YouTube. And um, I, I believe that's all. I don't think we're on any of the other things yet um, until we get banned, until I get banned. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to get banned on Twitter for saying something way too edgy. And they're going to realize I'm part of these podcasts and they're going to tear them off everything. And then we're going to have to only be able to put it on BitChute. That's going to be the logical next step. Um, so until next week, guys, signing off, it is Matt and Matt.